This lesson is for section 7.3. We're going to be multiplying polynomials. Specifically, we're going to be multiplying conjugate binomials, um, and we're going to be po multiplying polynomials with more than just two terms. So we're going to see all sorts of different problems here where we're going to be multiplying polynomials. And then on the back side of our notes, we are going to be factoring quadratic trinomials and difference of squares, which is really just a review of stuff that we've seen all year. Now our first objective uh, specifies that we're going to be multiplying conjugate binomials. And the reason why we're going to do this is because we always get a special product um, when we multiply conjugate binomials. So here I have a plus b. Now the conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. If we were to multiply these, we need a FOIL. So we'd have our first terms here. a times a gives me a squared. Our outer terms, a times negative b, would give me negative ab. Our inner terms, so plus ba. And then our last terms, so negative b squared. Now when I look inside here, negative ba and uh, positive ba actually cancel each other out. And that leaves me with a squared minus b squared. So this is your special product of any time you get conjugate binomials and you're multiplying them. So we call this a difference of squares. Difference meaning you're subtracting, and here squares because you square both of those parts. So here in, in question number one, I don't actually want you to FOIL this out anymore. I want you to be able to recognize right away that all you need to do is take your first term. That's like the a, right? This is like seeing a minus b times a plus b. So we definitely have uh, conjugate binomials. So we take our first term, we square that. So if we take 3x squared, um, or 3x and we square it, we should get 9x squared. Then we have the difference between our second term squared. So this term would not now be 25. So the product here is 9x squared minus 25. Again, this is something we want you to be able to recognize and pretty much do um, instantaneously now. Now problem two is on here because sometimes we see students um, just distribute the two to both of these terms um, and they're not foiling. So make sure you realize that 3x minus 5, that quantity squared, is not just 3x squared minus 5 squared. So it's definitely not equivalent to that. So you don't want to just distribute the two. What you want to do here is actually foil this out. So this is 3x minus 5 times another 3x minus 5. Now I would like you guys to also be able to do a problem like this very quickly. Now you're going to see that when I um, foil this out, so my first term would be 9x squared, my outer terms give me a negative 15x, the inner terms give me another negative 15x, and the last terms would be positive 25. So when I uh, simplify, I have 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. So this is what I would get by just normal foiling. I want you to be able to go from here straight to here. Um, if we look at our product, you realize that this is the first term squared, right? That's 3x squared. The last term here is your second term squared. So negative 5 squared gives me a positive 25. The middle term is double two times the, in, the product of the first and the second term. So if we multiply 3x times negative 5, we would get negative 15x. And if we double that, that's where we end up with the negative 30x. So real quickly, I'm going to just do a problem. You don't obviously have to write it down. But let's say I gave you 4x minus 2, that quantity. Or let's do 4x minus 3 squared. I know that I'm going to have my first term, 16x squared, and my last term squared, so that would be positive 9. My middle term will come from doubling the product of 4x and negative 3. So I would get negative 12x and then double that, so I'd get negative 24x. So if you check that, foiled it, you would get that same uh, product here. Okay, so again, we want you to be able to do these kind of quickly. Um, it'll just save you a lot of time and make you a lot more efficient when you're going through problems. Okay, next up in problem three, uh, we have a pretty large polynomial here. This has four different terms, and we're multiplying it by another polynomial that's a trinomial because it has three terms. So unfortunately, there's no quick way to multiply these out. Um, there's no shortcut. We actually have to do everything by hand here. Um, because it's kind of confusing with what terms you're supposed to multiply, I like to call these the shirts pants problems. Um, it's kind of silly, but hopefully it'll help you remember what parts you're supposed to multiply. So if we think of this side, this polynomial here, is all the shirts in your closet. And this polynomial here represents all the pants in your closet. If you're trying to make an outfit, you have to wear shirts with a pair of pants. But you've got two other options here for this shirt. You could wear this pair of pants as well as that pair of pants. So that represents all the multiplication that you're going to be doing with this specific shirt or term. Now I can also pick a different shirt, and I've got three options here for the pants. And I just keep doing that. I pick the, now this shirt, and I multiply it with the, these pair of pants, and so on. So you can see, basically, we're going to end up with 12 terms when we multiply that all out together. Okay, So let's begin here. 
So I've got x cubed that I need to multiply by x squared. So make sure you know your rules here for the exponents. You want to add those. So that becomes x to the fifth, not x to the sixth. It's very easy to make very small errors like that. So we have x cubed times x squared gives me x to the fifth. Then x cubed times 4x gives me positive 4x to the fourth. x cubed times negative 3 gives me negative 3x uh, cubed. Sorry, And then I move on to the next term. So I never want to multiply terms together that are inside the same um, you know, parentheses. So then I take negative 2x squared, I multiply here, and I get negative 2x to the fourth, then negative 8x cubed, then positive 6x squared. So it's so easy here to make mistakes on just your signs or even your exponents, so be very careful and always you know, do these and double check them. Then we have our next term here that will give me 5x uh, cubed, then 20x squared, and negative 15x. Last term here, I'm going to take negative 7, multiply by x squared, that gives me negative 7x squared, negative 7 times 4x, and then finally negative 7 times negative 3, give me positive 21. Now if I go through here, I should end up with 12 total terms, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that way I know that I didn't skip any terms, so you can always go back and count too to make sure that you're uh, doing the problem correctly. After that it's just a matter of combining like terms. So here I have an x to the fifth, um, and that's the only x to the fifth that I have, so it's going to just stay x to the fifth. But then I have a term with x to the fourth here, as well as an x to the fourth here. So 4 minus 2x to the fourth gives me positive 2x to the fourth. Um, and I just keep going through. I like to cancel them out after I use them, too, so I know I've used them up. Um, negative 3 and negative 8 plus this 5 gives me, let's see, positive, negative 6x cubed. Okay, and then I move on to the x squareds. So I have 26x squared minus a 7x squared here, which would give me 19x squared. Then let's see, we'll cancel. And I have negative 15x and negative 28x here, which gives me negative 43x. And finally, that 21. All right. So my final answer doesn't have to have 12 terms in it, but when I multiply, you know, all of that out, I should have 12 terms, and then they reduce here to this polynomial. Now, in problem four, um, you see three binomials. Uh, make sure that you multiply one set first. So if I were to multiply here, and it really actually doesn't matter what you decide to multiply first uh, because multiplication is commutative. So we could take x plus 5 and multiply it first by x plus 2, and it wouldn't make a difference for our final result. And I'm just going to multiply in order here and, and take the first two. If I FOIL out this, I should get x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then I'll have to multiply that by x plus 2. Now, um, you could put the x plus 2 out in front. Sometimes I, I see students who like to do it this way, so that they're distributing this three times and then distributing this three times, but altogether we should get six terms. I'd like you to finish that off and just simplify. Uh, number five here, for the product of this, x minus five cubed, again, don't just you know distribute that three. This is really x minus five times another x minus five times another x minus five, so it's x minus five to the third power. So this turns into a problem just like the one that you are going to finish on your own. You'd obviously multiply this first, so we'd have x squared. Now, this I want you to, again, recognize as a pattern when you have the exact same uh, binomial and you're supposed to FOIL that. Remember, take the first term and the last term, so that would give you positive 25. Your middle term is going to come from doubling the product of 5 and negative x. So that middle term here should be 2 times negative 5x to give me negative 10x. And then, of course, we're going to multiply again by x minus 5. Um, if you need to put that in front, you can, or you can just distribute this term, this term, and this term, and you still get the exact same result, okay? Multiply, and then collect your like terms. So I'll let you guys finish that one off on your own. Okay, so the next section here is actually just a factoring review, so if you would like, you can totally pause the video and try the problems on your own. Um, if you get them correct by looking at the key, then I would stop the video and you're good to go for the review part of our factoring lesson. Um, if not, then let's get started. So here we have... Uh, a trinomial, and the first thing I want to recognize here is a GCF. So always make it easy on yourself by taking out a GCF. That should be your number one goal, is to always look for a GCF. So we have a 3 here that I can take out. Now I have x squared minus 7x plus 12, and now that becomes very easy for me to factor, because all I need to do is find two numbers and multiply to 12 and add up to negative 7. So that gives me x minus 4, and x minus 3 is my two binomials and I'll keep that 3 out in front. This is as far as this goes. Remember, we're just factoring. We're not solving, so that would be my final answer. Now, in number 7, when I look to try to take out the GCF, there is no GCF here, 
So because I have a lead coefficient here that's not 1, I have to split the middle term here and factor this uh, a little bit differently. So remember, we multiply the first number and the last number. That gives me negative 36. And the middle term here is a negative 5. I'm looking for two numbers whose product is negative 36 and whose sum is negative 5. So in other words, they multiply to negative 36 but add up to negative 5. Well, those two numbers would be negative 9 and 4. So I'm going to split up this middle term here into negative 9x and 4x. So I have 3x squared minus 9x plus 4x minus 12. So I just want to reiterate here that we're just splitting this middle term we don't do anything with the first term or the last term. Those just drop completely. Okay, so really this is equivalent to uh, the first line of work here. We haven't changed the problem at all. We're just rewriting the negative 5x a little bit differently. Now we can factor by grouping. So we look at the first two terms. We ignore the last two. We try to take out the GCF here, which is going to be 3x. And I'm left with x minus 3. And I do the same thing in my second two terms. I look for the GCF here. The GCF would be a 4. And I'm left with x minus 3. You need to get the exact same things here and here. Um, and you should always also, I've noticed a lot in, in um, some of the test questions that we'll have, that sometimes when this ends up being a positive 1 here, people don't write the 1. You should always have a number here in your second uh, term there. You should always have a number before that parenthesis. Uh, don't leave it blank because there is always a number. If it's a positive 1 or a negative 1, you need to make sure you write that in. So anyhow, um, now that I have the same thing in the binomials, I know I'm doing it right. I'm going to keep that binomial and just write it one time. The other binomial comes from taking 3x and 4 and grouping those together. The reason why you're grouping those together is because what do 3x and 4 have in common? Oops. Sorry, that should be a 3x here. 3x and 4 have this x minus 3 term in common. So really what we're doing here is factoring out the x minus 3. Right? If you pulled out the x minus 3 together, you'd be left with 3x plus 4, and that's why your other term ends up being 3x plus 4. So that's our final answer here, and that's uh, just factoring a trinomial with a lead coefficient that's not 1. Okay, next up is number 8. Now, um, when you look at this, you see a binomial, because we have two terms, but we don't see a GCF between them. So some people will stop and say that this is not factorable. But what you need to be able to recognize is that, is that this is a special product that we talked about on the front side of our notes. This is a difference of squares. So we need to be able to recognize when we see a difference of squares. And the reason why it's a difference of squares, again, the major point here is that it's a subtraction. So we, we see a difference. And then this term here is something squared, and this term is something squared as well. So remember, the difference of squares comes from multiplying two conjugate binomials. So a plus b times a minus b results in a squared minus b squared. So here, this is like seeing a squared minus b squared. Well, what's the a and the b term? The a term here would be just x, and the b term here would be just 9. So we have a, uh, I'm sorry, x plus 9, and x minus 9 is how x squared minus 81 would factor. Now number 9, this is also a difference of squares. Okay, I'll call it dos. So this is also a difference of squares, and um, it looks a little bit more complex because of your second term here. Um, make sure that you don't change the order. We always want to make sure we take, take the first term here. So that first term squared, uh, I'm sorry, the first number here should be 10, because 10 squared gives me 100. Then plus this term, if I think about what squared gives me x squared y to the fourth, that would be x, y squared. So if I were to square x, y to the second, I end up with x squared y to the fourth. Okay, so that's going to be my second term. And then multiplied by 10 minus x, y squared. So please don't mix up the order. Um, sometimes when we see like 100 minus x squared, I'll see students take that and write that as x plus 10 and x minus 10, which actually is not equivalent to this. This would give you x squared minus 100, and it totally switches the signs. So on this, you have to make sure the order is very important here. This would be 10 minus x and 10 plus x. Okay. Now obviously the 10 plus x here doesn't make a difference if you have x plus 10, but this is really what's very important is that the negative has to go in front of the x. All right? Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Um, make sure that you're good on factoring all of these types of different uh, problems. And then the front side of multiplying the binomials and the uh, different polynomials. If you're comfortable with that, you should be ready to go tomorrow. Nice job. See you in class.